Who are these guys? It's my theme music. Every good hero should have some. Who are these guys? It's my theme music. Every good hero should have some. Today's topic is the season three premiere of The Past and Professor, and we have uh, a really, uh, I guess, difficult topic to speak on today. We're dealing with uh, Sherman, Smart, and Sam, the American caging and censorship of the black athlete. Uh, there's been a lot in the news lately about uh, Sam, uh, Michael Sam coming out as being a homosexual, um, uh, SEC Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, he's coming out right before the NFL draft. Before that, we had the incident with Marcus Smart of Oklahoma State um, pushing the fan that allegedly called him a racial slur, probably the N-word. But on our show, we say nigga. We do not censor ourselves. Um, and then also Richard Sherman of the Seattle Seahawks before winning the Super Bowl, beating San Francisco 49ers, who has uh, this kind of uh, aggressive moment where he's calling out Crabtree in front of a white female reporter. And it seemed to startle not only the white female reporter, but America as a whole. So what we want to do today with the season three premiere of The Passive Professor. As you can see, it's only the professor here today. Uh, and of course, the other second, third portion of the show, Killer John and Killer Hamilton, that's on the uh, cameras and the sound system. Um, we hate that we got to miss the professor, of the pastor, and he's a professor as well for a few minutes, but we're going to try to get into it. So with the audience here at Brinson's here in Memphis, Tennessee, I really want to open up the doors and make it more so like a uh, roundtable discussion about what we think about how they are caging the black athlete. Is there some type of conspiracy you think about black male athletes in particular uh, being censored as far as how you're living with smart, your lifestyle, um, your verbal rhetoric like they did with Sherman, and then your physicality like they did with um, Marcus Smart? Because in essence, people are comparing it to modern day slavery, but we know professional athletes are getting paid. Amateur athletes don't get paid like Marcus Smart, and you're paying to be entertained, not to abuse um, the athlete. You know, if you go to the zoo and you try to abuse the animals, what are they going to do? Kick your ass out of that ball from the zoo. That's what's going to happen. If you go to the circus and you try to abuse the circus animals, they're going to kick your ass out again. But you go to these games and they think that they can verbally assault black males and call them any and everything. Now, Marcus Smart never said that he called him a racial slur. It was alleged from an anonymous source on the team. But when he apologized uh, to the university, to NCAA, about his activity, he never mentioned a racial slur. And the other guy, I think his name was, uh, I think it was, a, I forgot his name. What's his name, Jerry? Uh, Jimmy Orr. Or Jimmy, Orr. yeah, or Jeff Orr. Jeff Orr, Jimmy Orr. He says, I called him a piece of shit. Either way, that's kind of like a verbal assault on an athlete, and that's not what you're paying for. So I want to open it up about do we think there's some type of deconstruction of the black male stereotype, um, particularly with the athlete, because the athlete is look like a hero. Um, he's a sex symbol. He does things with his body that you cannot do. He can jump. He can run. And that's probably the only positive stereotype I've ever really come across of with outside of the black community about the black male, particularly the uh, black race as a whole, is the uh, physical prowess of our race. So I want to open it up. Um, I have a couple guests here from Hype Life that'll be um, having that little shit and dig afterwards. We got uh, Fat Mac, uh, legendary poet here in Memphis, Tennessee, and then FW Love, another legendary poet. We go way back to the University of Memphis here. So I want to open it up. I told them to be involved today. And I got a special guest. We got LOC alums. I got another special guest. A friend of mine, we go back to, is it sixth grade, fifth grade? Germantown Middle, 3138, long time ago. Um, JR Camera, we got him here. So I want everybody to feel more um, as if they're a part of the production day opposed to being a part of the audience. So, first question What do you think, of, in and of itself, of this whole situation about these two? You can take Sherman, Smart, and Sam at once, or your particular opinion on one of those people. Trouble. Come get the microphone, sir. And I know your opinions are going to be uncut today. Well, I was thinking, uh,
everybody should be able to say whatever they want to say. Okay. I think everybody's too sensitive. I think um, in sports, you talk is the is the is one of the few places where I can remember where you say whatever you want to say to your opponent. Like you, if you have to verbally destroy them, then you do that. You um. I remember um, referring to my own teammates as a female or a soft for not being able to pull off a play or not sticking it to somebody in a certain way. Um, it's one of the the few places where I think um, old school men are able to be old school men without the new school PC. Which is in pure contrast to basically Sam, right? You're saying old school man, like what's the idea of what is an old school man? Because you're talking about Sherman, right? But it's still some type of, they don't want us to necessarily express ourselves. I mean, on both sides. Off, once you get off that field, it's, it's in essence, be quiet. You know, run nigga, run, be quiet. But you're saying that old school male, and that falls into the category with Sam. Michael like Sam is trying to even uh, uh, break that whole barrier of an active NFL player being openly right. homosexual. So you, it seems like we would be stereotyping, men would be stereotyping a man that we say is not necessarily masculine. You're saying oh, where men can be men, but what is being a man? You see what I'm saying? So, I think by him stating the fact that however he feels or who he is, and he put it out there, that's being a man. A man, to me, I can't just say, like, to define a man, like, you know, that's, to me, I'm going to always say what I want to say when I want to say it. So him coming out is is masculine, basically. Right. Okay. If, okay. If, because this is how I feel, this is where I stand at. I ain't scared about how you feel. I'm not really, I don't really care about how you feel about me being this way, obviously, because I put it out there. And... He has to be prepared for whatever consequences come with putting that out there. It's the same as a player coming out and saying that he is a racist. And he's saying, I'm a racist, I don't like whatever, brown, or I don't like whites, but we on the same team and I want to win. Okay, good. Okay, you're saying, okay, being a man, he coming out being a man, he has to deal with the consequences. Uh, the NFL, I think the, uh, I know the Supreme Court has a law where all these professional sports in the United States, MLB, NBA, NFL, is a right to work, right? But do you think this will basically make a negative working environment, or will he not be drafted as high as he possibly could or stick with the team because he's come out, because the consequences may be that, because you're saying men can be men. There's no more place that a man can really be the idea or the social construct of what it is to be a man except on the football field. Everybody I know wanted to play football. Every alleged big, strong boy or masculine boy, that was one sign of masculinity, is to play sports. Football is like the uh, the pantheon of it all, right? Where you rough and tumble, you can take a lick. All of us, for the most part, have played at one time. You might wasn't big enough or strong enough to cut it out after past junior high school, but everyone looks at, at, at football like that. Every, all over the world, NFL has more uh, viewership per week, and they only play, what, three times a week, and based on all night, and they still have more viewership. So this is where you're masculine at. But would this stop Sam from having an opportunity to work? Because yeah. while he's being a man, you're saying, I mean, isn't that still deconstructing the idea of that black buck athlete, though? Because saying, he's not supposed to be gay. I'm saying if, if whatever happens is going to happen, and that's the problem with speaking your mind. When you speak your mind, you uh, you need to, if you decide you want to speak your mind. But it'd be discrimination, though. It, it, if it doesn't work, it's discrimination. If, if it doesn't work, it, it, it is discrimination, I, and, it's, and it's messed up. I, but at the same time, um, whenever the first person does anything where first people weren't accepted, it's first, been, yeah, yeah. This, this is how it happens. Yeah, Man destroys yeah. what they do not understand. You know what I mean? So it's a situation I, with I that. Want, I want to jump in. And I don't want to put anybody on the spot. But we do have females in the audience. I was talking to my sister um, last night about it. I was like, you know, we, I wrote an article on rainbows and lilacs about it. And um, they don't have to get on camera if they don't want to. But I really would like you to open up and talk about it simply because 
I was talking to my wife and I was talking to my sister and I said, what do y'all think about this situation? I wrote an article about it and they told me, one of them tells me, I'm not going to snitch on either one of them, but they say, they look at sports, particularly football, see how the man's built, he got the tight pants on, he's running, a lot of these men are very attracted to them. Um, they're not necessarily looking for us, and there's a huge female followership in sports. Don't think when your wife or your girlfriend or your lady is sitting up there with you that they're watching it for the same reason. We're trying to see them put points on the board. They're, they're almost living a voyeuristic type of situation where they're fantasizing about that sexy black male athlete or white or what have you. So do you think the fact that Michael Sam being gay, my sister said, that almost ruins the fantasy of sports for her altogether because what happens here is she says, how many others are like this? Because if Michael Sam is coming out, is everybody gay? She's like, that ruins the fantasy in general because now maybe people are in the closet and they're not coming out and don't have the bravery that uh, Fat Mac just mentioned. But does it ruin the fantasy for you and does it stop you from being a bigger supporter of sports? Particularly if he's on your favorite team. I know that's loaded. Basically, how do you feel about black male gay athletes playing professional sports? And tell me who you are and where you're from. Um, first off, I guess I want to say I don't watch sports at all. So by me not watching sports. You haven't even heard this story? Yes, I have. Okay, okay. I, I, I read. Okay. I watch Yahoo or whatever. Okay. Um, but with that, him coming out still should, he still should be a player. Okay. That, that's his job, to be a player. Uh -huh. So if he's going to do his job, and he's going to do his job at 100%, it, it shouldn't matter whether when he gets home he has a husband or a wife. Okay. That should not stop what he does on the football field. Will you not root for him differently, though, well, if, no. you, if you know that he likes a man? Well, if, if he goes out and do what he's supposed to do... I don't know. You might be good. John, is she good? If, if, okay. if he goes out and do what he has to do, then what difference does it make what he likes? And we can still fantasize about him as women. We can sit as a woman and say, mm, what a shame, what okay. a waste. Okay. Or I hate that this is gone to the other side. Uh huh. What a shame, what a waste. You know, I got to eat you up there. <laughs> that right there is a theme and some type of conflict we got to deal with. Why would a woman say, what a shame, what a waste? Because it's an attractive, well built, and wealthy man that is no longer available. Because that's the fantasy, right? right. Even if you're married, right. I could possibly have Michael Jordan in his heyday. Right. Maybe not now. But you know what? I think that women say, would say that or can say that even if that person is married. Because basically, you can't have whether they're gay, whether they're married, whether they're straight. Okay, that's what they're we all They're not for you, they're Good. for somebody else. So, okay. And I mean, men say it all the time when they see. If they're looking nice, oh, what a shame, what a waste. No, you know what? We think we can still get them. <laughs> yeah, we think we can still and turn them back. Really, and it's really fun seeing mm -hmm. that try to happen. So it's not that big of an issue. You don't think it'll turn off female viewership? I don't think so. Okay. I, think, I think both men and women will watch it to see. You, they'll gamble on, they'll bet against whether he can get out there and be that manly man or okay. not. So Good. that's what he'll have to prove that. Cool, cool, After cool, all, cool. everything that's said and done, he was, before he came out, he was what, number, number, number one? Number one defensive, the right. MVP, co-MVP right. co of so the, the SEC. And so the fact that he's gay shouldn't, shouldn't mean any difference from his, for his performance. Okay. If he performed that way before you knew he was gay, what's to make him perform differently now that you know he's gay? I, I want to interject because I still want to go back to where I'm going. This is not the athlete or the gay athlete. It's also the black male gay athlete. Mm -hmm. Like, is there an agenda to, to feminize the black man? I mean, you don't, I was telling, I was putting on Facebook today, progressive, everybody's like, well, if you're anti-homo, if you're homophobic, you're not progressive. If you still believe in, even, let's go far back, segregation, you're not progressive. In, in, in the, any ism, racism, sexism, um, you're not progressive. I said, well, progressive doesn't mean accepting. Right? I mean, you can still deal and tolerate with it something, but you don't have to accept it as a moral code, particularly in your life. That's the beauty about this country. But do you think it seems like we're always, what I'm saying is with these particular three guys, high profile, Richard Sherman just won, 
the Super Bowl, the Seattle Seahawks was the most visible face, and they called him the new Deion Sanders. He's a corner. He shut down your corner. No wide receivers going to catch on him allegedly, okay? That's masculinity, right? Long dreads, he's looking the part of a nigga, of that thug that they say that niggas look like they get arrested. The dreads, tattoos, that's him. And he's from Oakland, right? It's West Coast Memphis. Poverty, crime. Then you got um, um, Marcus Smart. Young kid, 19, maybe 20 years old. He puts his hands on that fan, right? Um, because the fan allegedly called him a nigger or go back to Africa nigger, but then he puts his hands on the fan and the pundits, the social network world, your scholars on your workplace, people are saying that he ought to have more self-control at 19, right? Really? Okay. And he's not a professional athlete. I can see if he was in the NBA getting paid. I'm at work. I can't kick nobody's ass at work, and I want to oftentimes, but I can't. Then you have the guy coming out, Michael Smart, and he's gay. What I'm saying is it seems like, and then they're on all three of them, right? Let's shut the nigga up. Let's kick the nigga's hands to himself. And then this nigga likes men, so don't think that he's your hero. Because everyone idolizes the black male athlete. Ain't no question about it, and they might shut us down on YouTube right now. There's no question about it that the majority rules, and it seems like whenever blacks in the sport, they excel. Now, that's not my best favorite stereotype for African Americans, right? because it's a physical thing, it's a God-given thing, but it's one of the few positive stereotypes that we have. Does it seem like they're trying to feminize the black male and de deconstruct this idea of that hero, right? That book, is that what's happening? I think she oh, came right. Pat, what do you think? JR, what do you think? And you can't hide either, you got it now, you should have just held it, because you can't, I'm gonna come back to you, period. You can't hide. I can't do that. She can't tell me how to do that. Gotcha. I, My, yeah, I get, don't, don't let me get you in trouble. Me too. I mean, I had a different experience than anyone else here growing up. You know, like, I didn't have the same experiences that you guys did being an Indian, you know, growing up. So when you talk about feminizing the black male athlete, okay. I never looked at him as like a black male athlete. I was like, that's Michael Jordan. He's like the greatest that ever lived, right? Like, he, was, he did what he did. And so for me, I mean, we can take all three. Richard Sherman, they caught him on camera like maybe 10 seconds after he was going to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Of course he's going to be boisterous. Yeah. I saw nothing wrong with what he did. Mm -hmm. And then people, yes, like, you know, they're, they're going to say what they're going to say, but regardless if it was a, I personally feel a black athlete or a white athlete, if the same exact thing was said, you're still going to be called a thug. Probably you know, not like, thug though, Jr. Look at Marshall Henderson. I think you'll be called some things, but maybe not thug. But I'm gonna let you finish. Right. What about Marshall Henderson? White guy, yeah. Ole Miss yeah. plays yeah, basketball, Miss. right? One of the most boisterous, in-your-face basketball players, but he backs up with his play. He's a guy that's like going to the student section, popping his jersey. Yeah. He gets a call. Uh -huh. And so, you know, I have no problem with what uh, Sherman did. I mean, and then you dig a little deeper to who he is as a person. Yeah. I mean. The Stanford grad, Stanford grad, yeah, master's you know, degree, yeah, yeah, yeah. With, he's from Compton. He's a legit dude. He's got his stuff together. Uh -huh. Mark is smart. I get this. We're all fans, right? Like we all. Me, we're probably not because of what he did to us at the early part of the year. Look, University of Minnesota. No, I'm saying fans bad. in general yeah. of sports, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a Tigers yeah, game on. We'll go in there and we'll say stuff about the opposing team. We don't know anything about. I'm like, I'm not going to drop the head bomb. But I'm going to be like, dude, what the hell, like, you suck. Mm -hmm. um, but I still think that there's a line, if you're performing the sport, that you have to have that separation okay. of physical contact. Like, I, if he would have gotten in his face and yelled at him, that's one thing. But you actually push him. A friend of mine said, if he was at the free throw line and he was shooting and he said, go back to Africa, nigga, and he ran to the stands and, and pushed him, that's outside the lines. But mind you, this is almost in the breath of the play. He, right. he blocks the shot, and his momentum pushes him into the stands, Agreed. and he hears this. So it's a little different, right? Agreed. But I, I think that, you know, there was a failure on the coach's part. There's probably a failure on his teammate's part. You know, there's a failure on the fan, obviously, to say what he did. But, I mean, I think that there's a failure for Marcus Smart, too. Like, yes, you're in the heat of the moment, but I think you always have to be cognizant of what's going on and the stage that you're on. Um, and as far as Michael Sam, you know, the guy came out, like, he did it before draft day because he wanted it out of the open. Yeah. I think he can – Make sure he can file a lawsuit against the NFL well, just in case. No, I think he'll get drafted. Yeah. And I think that he'll get drafted by a team that recognizes who he is, 
and his talent level and gets that. You put him in the right locker room, like he'll be fine. He's not going to be a distraction. Because the guy was the co-defensive player of the year for the best football college, collegiate conference in the United yeah. States. You know, his, Maybe NFL. You know, yeah. he, it'll be a story for the first three or four weeks that his team's on TV, but he, if he performs, I think that's just going to go away. He's just going to be like the same. You have an intriguing um, point of view because you always, and we all, we've talked about this regularly, about you know you being a minority and me being a minority, but we have totally different viewpoints. Like you damn near come off like extreme conservative, and I probably only come off that fiscally. But you always say like it's a different. You have a different textual window to look at everything, and so you're saying you didn't look at you don't look at black athletes as if they're set apart from the rest of African Americans. I want to get other who's all playing sports in here, at least at the the junior high or high school level, uh, competitive or what have you. Um, did not the, it's harder because we went to a not really diverse, but we had different types of right. ethnic groups there. But when you're at all black school, even you're a black star is a stud, and he's you know y'all know some of those basketball players and football no, stars. I mean, What's supposed to get no high school diploma? Come on now, quit playing. Okay, and and I like everywhere within our community, I know it is. And then outside of it, you remember when we in high school, we can't call names. I want to, you know no, I do. But, like, but it was they were upheld like something was different. So what I'm asking is, do you think there's a reason behind America should look at athletes, and I'm sure they do. We know it's a billion dollar industry, right? Multi-billion. Right. Just like we do within our own little communities. So is it a new assault, what I'm trying to ask? And I like other voices, but is it an assault on that particular hero worship of black people. Because be honest, everything else is an anomaly, right? It's an exception. Well, President Obama went to Harvard. OK. Well, uh, you got Michelle. Well, she's the wife, right? Well, you got Beyonce, right? Well, you got Oprah, right? But these are really black exceptions that are always mentioned. But your average black, your Jordan Davises, your Trayvon Martins, your Keats down the street that are getting abused and killed unlawfully, they're not upheld like that, right? So there's, that's that one thing that we have, the black super athlete. Is it an assault on it is what I'm asking. That way there's no nothing else to really uphold the black race about. That's the only positive stereotype you can think about. Asians are smart. But White I, folks rich and got power. Latinos got culture and family. Indians are smart. They come over and make it and their parents work hard and make great grades and they make it to the suburb, right? What's black? What's the black stereotype? We can run. We can jump. We can dance. Hold up, the positive one. Those are positives. And then everything else I can go on and on. So that's what I'm asking, basically. I mean, again, like I, my window or my point of view is so different than everyone else here, you know, because for me, like, you know how to ball, you know how to ball. Like, I don't care if you're black, I don't care if you're white. Like, I, I wish there was an Indian basketball player in the NBA. Yeah. You know, maybe then I could put him on that pedestal. Uh -huh. But, you know, so I, I don't know. Like, but I think that you raise, like, another interesting topic. Uh, why isn't it the the African American who can like goes to MIT mm -hmm. and, cre and creates the next Facebook? Why isn't it um, the founder of Oracle? Or mm -hmm. well, to expect, or, or whether we have our every ethnic group has their geniuses and their social changers, but it's expected when we see, particularly in America, when you hear. You know, Zuckerberg, right? That's a Jewish name, right? Or he's white. We black folks, we think all of them are Jews. We don't care. We're Jews, Germans, you're white. But it's not a shock. But if the black dude is the guy who came up with first Facebook or Microsoft, it's like, oh my God, like you really have to uphold those. We can literally put, America literally puts all of our alleged heroes on about 150 different posters for Black History Month, and that's it. So literally, in the existence here since 1619 or 1555, when the Na Nation of Islam claimed we got here on the ship Jesus, that we've only had 150 blacks that have been exceptional, right? It's expected from, for Indians to be uh, 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 engineers, right? It would not be shocking, right? right? I always laugh because you weren't that good in math like you should have been. Uh, but, uh, yeah, my right? Yeah, yeah, you see those stereotypes, right? So I'm saying it seems like there's a deconstruction and I think we're looking past it if we don't think it's a serious stuff. Think about it. All of this is really overshadowing Black History Month, right? We ain't even talking about it. It's been from late, early February, the Super Bowl with Sherman, then Smart, then this. And it's all different categories. You got sexuality or sexual preference or orientation, whatever you believe in. Then you have the verbal silencing of the black athlete. Because he startled, I think it was a male um, 
reporter or even a black reporter, whether it's female or, or male, it wouldn't have been shocking. He startled that white woman. They had never heard him. They thought he was mad at her. So I think it's maybe a let's put these niggas back in their place type of thing. And I don't want to just be talking to JR, of course, but I feel like it's a, it's that. So I want to hear what we think about that particular. You know how you have, uh, what was it, Bizarro Superman, remember? It was Superman and then Bizarro Superman was real evil. He was always doing, you know, real evil shit. But that's what it seems like that they're trying to do with the black athlete. No longer celebrate him. He's not a Mr. Nice Guy. Look, you give him some money and camera and some fame, and look what happens. My favorite, F.W. Love. I don't know, I'm not all that familiar with him, but uh, when you talk about deconstruction, uh, I often think about who was the constructor. Like who, who, who even gave us that idea, you know? And uh, especially with the athletes, one of the things that always bothers me is that we forget who these men are, like, really. Uh, like the Jackie Robinson story or whatever. Like, uh, these are not the best athletes yeah. that America has to offer. They're the chosen athletes. They're the chosen yeah. athletes. And they've been chosen for particular reasons. They've been chosen so that they don't run in the crowd and push. They've been chosen so that they don't startle the white reporter. Like he, with his, with his degree and all that they've done, he was not supposed to do that. <coughs> yeah, I like, I he love that. Not, he yeah. was not supposed to do that. He they went to got, Yeah, they could have got any nigga to do that. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but you were chosen for these reasons. Mm -hmm. and, we, okay. and like, I, I think that's the unspoken part of the contract. Though, okay, like, good, uh, good. That they all at, are at work. You know, and when I think about uh, which one came out, um, Michael Sam of Missouri. That's like, if, if, if I'm about to become a commodity for another person, mm -hmm. I would definitely say that I was gay because now you can sell me. You can sell yes, me better than anyone else. That makes you, that puts them up in the draft pit because they're looking for merchandise. They're looking for people to sell. And they're going to make the Sherman. They, I'm sure they benefited a lot of that. They sold more Sherman jerseys because of that. Like, by like, Dre. Yeah, well, like yeah, all, yeah. all these things go into play. And okay. then like uh, at the end, I found that it's awkward for me because we're talking about like the reflexes of something that we really have no, we're like really just bystanders to all of this. You know what I mean? Like our, our opinion, what we have to say about this is irrelevant because we're, we're the guinea pigs being experimented upon. Like, Do you think it's completely, I always beg to differ there. I, know. I always, yeah, they say, you know. Like I really think that what happens is we think we have no power, so to speak. Like, the fact that Michael Sam is being broadcast in, right, or those visual aids were being broadcast, you know, of course, we have 24-hour networks. It's right. no secret about that. That's a scary thing, right? Like, most of us in here are old enough to know when te television used to go off. And you can watch them with the local, you know, ABC 24 here in Memphis, and, you know, uh, but it's 24 hours news and there's 24 hours sports, right? And that's a continuous cycle with them. Everything else is more so repeat. live stream news and sports. Those are the only networks that are live consistently, right? And if you allow that story to come in, I think kids do understand what could be going on. You know, I never ever thought about my hero athlete being gay. I used to, you know, I went to an all white elementary school. I used to think I saw aliens when other black students were walking the hallway because it was never but one of us in the cafeteria, <laughs> one of us in the classroom. I'm the only one on the bus. I'm the only one in my neighborhood. So when I see, I'd be reaching out like E.T. phoning home to them because we would have to see each other. So when I knew they could say everything they wanted, negative stereotypes, black folks are dumb, trifling, uh, uh, desolate, poor, at the bottom of the social, uh, economic uh, uh, ladder, uh, they can't read, they can't write, they're uncivil, they're animalistic, all those negatives, they could never combat my black athlete because we always had the best football player, allegedly, best basketball player, they knew, best track star. That was something that I knew, like, you know, that was kind of a little pride I had, right? Because I knew that the ones on the posters were, well, that's just Dr. King, or that's just Malcolm X, or that's just Rosa Parks, or that's just Benjamin Banneker, right? But you know him, right? But you know you had that athlete. You don't think that can affect them, Pat, in a way that if you don't pay, like, like you can literally explain to your children, right? And sometimes even your mate, your spouse, and your friends of what's going on because they'll slip right by you. Uh -huh. People were people were taken up for the dude in the stands that got pushed. They were mad at Michael Smart like he just started a fight. Exactly. Smart I mean, because like, he was at work. Like, they had he wasn't at work. He wasn't He's an work. amateur athlete. He is being an amateur athlete is being not being paid. Compensated. With a scholarship. With a scholarship. With a scholarship.
scholarship. Which, 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 which tells you what? So he, he's which, allowed which to make, I, he's allowed to make a million more dollars in his lifetime uh -huh. than the other. So athletes. how dare he touch right. it? Exactly. exactly. But it's supposed to be just a scholarship, scholarship right? right? This is a, no this money. Is this it, let's be legal. This is my mind when you say that because I, I think uh, this is kind of powerful in a slick way. Is that uh, we do ourselves a discredit by trying to minimize how important it is that we are the best athletes because athletes, uh, athletics, music, all those things that you named that we excelled in are the manifestations of all the properties or sciences or colleges that people, other people try to excel in. Like, uh, actually, for him to be an excellent defensive player, he does trigonometry faster yeah, yeah, than you do. Yeah, he, exactly. he does calculus faster mm -hmm. than you do. He, he, his process, him as an individual, is above you. Not just the fact that he runs, yeah. he understands his angles. He's creating angles that shouldn't because, even exist. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. like that, that is, it really denotes way more than we give it credit to. Okay. You know what I mean? They, we try to make, they, they, the constructionists, try to minimize it as being just because you run fast or, or the myth of the quarterback. You know what I mean? No, no black man could ever be quarterback because he doesn't have the mental <laughs> capability to perform such a tedious job. But he, he's performing these tasks. Like, if he's doing spatial, he's, he's uh, calculating speed and distance and time in an instant. He does that, with, which uh, other races or uh, groups of people have taken years out of their life to find mechanics that can calculate that for them to find out, you know what I mean? Like, uh, because that, that really denotes a lot more than we give the credit to. But like, as far as, I just, I mean, like in my, in my world, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you're either over here or you're over there. You know what I mean? And like, uh, anything goes when you're over there. So like, uh, once you sign the contract to play college anything basketball, goes. you're over there. Like, like, like you don't, that's what happens when you're over there. And it's cool, but like, uh, don't be trying to rile up people who are over here okay. about what's going on with you over there. Kind of like how I feel. Good, good. I'll take a break, sir. Let's do it. All right, we'll be back with a uh, second portion of the pastor <coughs> and the professor. Mine is the pastor, and hopefully he'll be flying in on his magic Bible. So we'll be right back. Oh.